Welcome back, Grave Diggers, to another episode of The Buried Sisters. I am your host, Irene, and sitting with me is my co-host and sister, Kiki. Hey, everyone. And our awesome producer, Lance. Hello. And today we're going to go into part two of Robert Willie Picton. And just to kind of recap, if you guys did not hear part one, we strongly suggest that you go back and listen to it. So today, where I'm going to start off, um, we're going to start the story on March 23rd, 1997. And I'm just going to do this to kind of set the tone. And then I'm going to take you guys back just a little bit. So we're going to do a little kind of like flash forward and then go yeah, back. Okay. Taking you all around. We got a little time all machine here. Town. All righty. So this story starts on one evening where a sex worker named Win- Wendy Lynn Eistetter was working the streets and she was picked up by a man that was driving a pickup truck. So he pulls up and says, would you like to work for the evening? And usually she doesn't go with, I guess, customers she hasn't seen before or doesn't go against her gut. But at that time she was really desperate. She, she was addicted to drugs for one, but also the boyfriend she was living with was kind of abusive and demanded that she went out and made money. So she was mm-hmm. kind of like, she felt almost forced to go along with and go against this, her better judgment and go against her better judgment. So she gets in the truck and she remembers just this horrible, horrible smell. She recalls like, it's just the stench of like stale, like dirt, decay, feces it just hit her like a ton of bricks when she got in the car or the truck i should say but again she was just kind of like well i mean you know money is money and he was offering her a good amount that she needed and right when you're in that truck you kind of feel like well now it's like what are you supposed to say you're smelly and weird yeah you stink you should if you're ever in a situation like that and you feel unsafe but often Mm -hmm. i think you feel like oh gosh if this is a bad situation i may be stuck in this one now i'm in this person's car and Right. And and as she's in the truck, she notices there's a bra um, on the floor. And this gives her a weird feeling, almost like an uneasy feeling. And she she questions the man who picked her up, which I'm sure you know was by this point, Willie. Right. She asks him, well, what's up with the bra? He goes, oh, yeah, it was just another another hooker left it the other night. No big deal. So she's like, so she's thinking, OK, that's kind of weird. But again, who am I to judge? I mean whatever i'm just gonna ignore it just do my job and then leave so they pull up to a farm on dominion avenue and as they pass the gate they pull up to a trailer that's on site now at this point willie had moved out of the basement and his brother decided that it'd be best for him to live in a trailer and Real quick side note, remember at this time that they were stealing cars and that they were kind of like making those teenagers steal cars yeah. for them. And so at this time, um, they had there was a lot of illegal activity. Basically, they had stolen this trailer. It was quite spacious. They said, Willie, you know, Dave said, Willie, you're creeping out my friends. You're kind of like a wet blanket at these parties and you're weird. So he said, why don't you live in this trailer? The stolen trailer. The stolen trailer. He had $2 million each, right? These people had $2 million (laughs) each. Okay. I just wanted to reiterate. Yeah, I got nothing on that. Why? I don't know. (laughs) I mean, do you? And the trailer is the furthest away from the main house that Dave and his girlfriends and all of them are living in. So you got one side of the farm where the trailer is and the whole complete other side is where the house is the actual main house is the mental institution still there no this is the new place that they live okay, at that's so right. yeah it. so they moved away from that now so they pull up to this trailer and they enter the trailer and when, as wendy enters the trailer she describes it as just dirt and debris all over so very similar to their living conditions in the main house there's kind of like old food everywhere, oh. maggots and flies, because, oh. you know, I mean, you leave old food out, right? Yeah, I mean, it's right. not going to look pretty. She notices there's like different kinds of clothing that are belong to different women. Like she notices just real quick, like, you know, a dress over here, a skirt over there, and they're stained with like something dark. Oh, gee. But, you know, this is at night. This isn't a trailer. She's never been here before. She's not going to sit there and like pick it up and start investigating. But this is just kind of what she's mentally, she's like mentally taking snapshot photos of what she sees. And so she sees women's clothing. She sees some purses, 
So, so and, again, and she's feeling yeah, no one's gonna leave weird. their purse behind if they go somewhere. Uh, like, right. Mm-hmm. I think she even sees like a prescription bottle um, with a woman's name on it. But again, you know, she doesn't know this man. So who knows? This could be his sister's prescription bottle. Sure, but bottle. everything is pointing to super creepy. He smelled like the truck smelled. There's a random bra. Right. Mm-hmm. It smells like multiple terrible things. And then you go into his trailer, which nothing wrong with the trailer, but it's filled with dirt, debris, uh, women's clothing, you know, with dark stains on it. Right. And purses and prescription. I mean... I would just, I can't, I have no words. I right, have no words. Right. I so, would just be mortified. Yeah. So she steps in. She kind of does like, again, like this quick, like kind of mental note that she sees this butcher knife that's on the kitchen oh, counter. Wow. It just gets worse. You worse. know, and it's not like this wouldn't be totally weird. Like a lot of us have like steak knives in our kitchen. Like I have that block of knives, but this was just like a random knife on the counter to her it seemed out of place to the point to where she remembered it and she feels like it had traces of something on it so you know okay if he was eating a steak or whatever but there no, was traces of no, something on it this is all weird no wonder that she made, took these mental notes yes like one of these things okay right. all of these things that's yeah. reason to be alarmed and take those mental snapshots absolutely and so willie then asks her like Let's go into the bedroom area. And I say area because this is, again, the trailer. So it's very compact. And so she's like trying to get to where like the beds, quote unquote, are. She's like climbing over all this like crap to get there. There's just piles of junk. And like I said, old food and Lord knows what else oh. is back there. And she goes back there and um, there's just a sleeping bag and some plastic wrap. Plastic wrap. Have you ever seen Dexter? I got scared watching. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got through episode one, <laughs> like, but like a little bit, like, like you know, what you have like a you know a frozen sandwich in, like, or like a roll, a big roll, like of like, like a, plastic wrap, like industrial style yeah, roll. Sure. I don't know if it was industrial, but sure, if that makes you feel worse, yeah, yes. it is, that makes me feel worse. <laughs> it does. I was hoping it'd be like an egg McMuffin wrapper. Or no, something. okay, that's not even plastic wrap. We're well, talking about the clear plastic wrap. Not, well, the not fake saran egg, wrap. The, the fake egg McMuffins at Costco come in a little plastic. No, wrap. no, she's talking like curtains, like. Plastic. Like, oh, yeah, like plastic oh. wrap. Yeah. Oh. So right. at some point, uh, you know, they go back there. She's undressing because that's what she's there for to do the deed. And at some point she asks Willie if she can use his phone to call her boyfriend. So that way she says, my boyfriend might be worried about me. I told him I'd check in. Can I use your phone? And he says, no, he's like, Ooh. no, sorry. You can't use my phone. But, you know, maybe later. And so then she goes, okay, well, can I use, do you have a phone book I can borrow? And at first I thought this was a little bit weird, but apparently she told him she needed to use the phone book to look up um, a certain pay phone that was located at a gas station. Um, and she was supposed to call that pay phone or so she says to him right. um, to check in with the boyfriend, whether this is true, I don't know, but she was obviously trying to think of something because she was very Poor uneasy. Thing. Yeah. And so he's like, fine, sure. Here's the phone book. And so as Wendy opens up the phone book and is, is starting to search for the number, she feels him grab her from behind and he slaps this like fur handcuff on oh one of her hands, like on her wrist. And so she, she spins around and she's trying to fight him off and she's, he's trying to handcuff her hands behind her back and she's fighting him with all she's got, just Jesus. trying to get him off of her. Um, since she's not cooperating, he starts like hitting her. He punches her in the face. Oh my gosh. And so, so she's this isn't just, just like a kinky, like, let me put these little handcuffs on you for, this is like, he's got, he's hitting her and punching. Yeah. Her. He punched her right in the face and um, he's beating her and she's fighting him, trying oh to fight my, him off. My goodness. And at that moment she remembers the butcher knife. And so as he's like hitting her and she's trying to fight him off, she maneuvers herself to where Willie backs her up um to the counter where the knife is and so she reaches behind her back and grabs that butcher knife and she just starts slashing at him oh and she's just slashing and slashing and she cuts him in the neck and in the chest and she gets him good get it girl yeah right like yeah Yeah. kick his ass and so she's slashing him um willie's bleeding but he's coming after her and at this point she kind of loses consciousness a little bit and she can't quite fully remember panic sure right 
And Shot. so after a minute or two, she regains consciousness. And this time she's uh, right outside of the trailer and she's totally naked. She's bleeding profusely oh. now from her hand. From and her hand. Her hand, because she has a defensive. He 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 grabbed the knife from her and he oh stabbed. My he's trying to stab her. And so she has a defensive wound from her hand oh. trying to block it. Um, oh and she's bleeding also from her stomach. Oh. And so she, they're still outside fighting. The, uh, she's struggling and she's just giving it all she's got. And eventually she actually regains possession of the knife again. Wow. And as she does this, she just bolts. She takes off. She runs out of the, uh, off the farm and to a house across the street, whatever house she finds. And she's yeah. banging on the door. Again, imagine like you were right. there, right? And she's banging on the door. She's screaming for Please help. Don't tell me it's the brother's she's house. She's bleeding everywhere. And there's no answer. Like oh no God. one opens the it's door. It's like a movie. It's her. like watching Halloween or something, you know? And of course, no one's home to help you. It's awful. That yeah. poor woman. So, so sad. So she's banging and banging. No answer. So... She, and again, you know, Willie, it could be right behind her. So she doesn't right. have time to sit there and hope that someone's going to answer the door. So she just decides to just start running down the street, down this highway. And she's not she has, wearing clothes. She's obviously. naked. She's oh. naked and she's bleeding badly. Oh. And so she's running down the street and it's late at night and she sees these headlights coming towards her. And this car starts to slow down. And it's this elderly couple, a man and his wife. And the poor little poor little old man he he sees this naked woman right. running down the street completely covered in blood at this oh. point and he says that part of her intestines were oh spilling out of her stomach so not only is she bleeding but her intestines are coming out i need a barf bucket seriously and so this poor woman a poor woman and so this this oh. elderly gentleman stops the car and gets out to help her oh and he, he gets her in the car and she says if i die the person who lives in that trailer did it wow and we'll come back to this in a few minutes and i'll tell you what oh, happened gosh to her. major cliffhanger <laughs> i yes. hope i hope the old man and i hope she's okay i hope everyone's okay you'll uh, find out in a minute all right so <sighs> Two years before this, so now we're going to go to 1995. We, like I said before, the farm has been run down. So just imagine everything's kind of falling apart, stuff everywhere. Um, the original pig pen that they had kept all the animals in, or I should say the pigs. Um, at one point it had collapsed and it was in such a state to where they couldn't keep the pigs in it anymore at all because the whole thing had like caved in. And these brothers were just so lazy that they didn't even bother. Not only did they not bother to fix it, but they just left it as is. So they had like this like caved in like building where the poor mm -hmm. pigs were supposed to live, but they didn't care. Instead, what they decided to do was those poor little pigs, the pigs and all the little newborn piglets were crammed into like this horse trailer. So they had all these pigs and they wow. just crammed them into this horse trailer, which is obviously no place for anybody to live or right. even the of course no place for the animals to live but they didn't care they just crammed them in there until it was time to slaughter the poor things oh man yeah poor little pigs and again and remember all three of these siblings had millions of dollars so they could have easily paid someone to come repair it or just to get a new one or whatever i'm but. so curious where their money like where they were putting their money drugs i, I mean i don't know if they did drugs but like well, what? Dave. Dave certainly did. Uh, Willie, I don't believe he did any drugs, but Dave did. I mean, obviously, Willie was not a sound person, so I'm sure two million dollars might have meant nothing to him. His, you know, yeah. he got his jollies doing other things. Oh, that's definitely true. And speaking of that, that one of his favorite things to do was slaughter pigs. And so, yes. right around this time, he teamed up with. Do you guys remember last? Um, Last episode, I briefly mentioned that he started working with a Filipino butcher. Yes. Okay, so at this time, um, Pat Casanova is his name. He was working with Willie on the farm to slaughter these pigs. And so what they would do, and this is really sad because I love animals, but what they would do is they would herd the pigs out of this tiny trailer um, one at a time. 
and they would go down the ramp and lead them into the slaughterhouse. Mm. Yeah. And they would grab the the little pigs by their like hind legs and tie them up with the rope. Oh man. And um, yeah, it's not pretty. And Willie would slit their throats and then hoist them up by their legs and just let like the bodies hang upside down and let them bleed out. And he loved doing this. Like he like this was like a blast for him. This was like his thing, you know, Um, the bigger pigs, they would use different methods. I don't have to get it too much into it, but heavier machinery, the chains. Um, He would do the same thing by tying their legs and then hanging them upside down. But um in addition to slicing their throats, he would also slice through their bellies. Now, was that necessary? Is that you probably don't know because you're not a butcher, but I'm curious if that's like standard procedure or if that's just him, Willie, kind of. No, that's his a fix, great question. You know? I I want to say I don't want to judge it. I mean, he is right. weird, and so I'm hardcore judging him. But I don't want to judge. Like I do feel bad. But I don't want to judge that process if that's right. I guess standard process like i don't think you're a bad person if I you're a butcher or a, no yeah a slaughterhouse but no i'm saying the fact that he loved doing yeah, it that's he, what was weird about it you know and then and the the poor li- the living conditions of these poor things it wasn't fair that they sure yeah it's unethical you know, and pigs unethical. are so intelligent that it's just like heartbreaking to, are they they're intelligent they're very intelligent they're one of the most intelligent animals yeah they have the consciousness of a three-year-old yeah. Like wow. The intelligence of a three year old. Yeah. With Willie, though, all these things. And then you add that he has this fascination, this not even fascination, this like what makes him happy. Is, he has like a desire to right. do it. Yeah. Like, that's right. like the like I love cutting chicken breast. I don't know why. <laughs> what, ew, what? What? I know. I What's sound like Willie. I'm you? not Willie. I love that's so. No, wait, I raw? Love, I get yeah, that. Yeah. Like raw chicken that's breast. That's disgusting. I get like, it. I'm <sighs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, I cut it's all that. slimy. But like, I wouldn't want like a whole chicken in front of me. That would freak me out. But like, you go to like. And it wasn't alive when you got it. Right. No, no. You you like go to like Costco and you get your chicken breast. And I'm like, oh, this is a big old breast. And I get to like cut it up. But like, <laughs> just like I you think slap it's, your hands, right? Oh, I and I love, yes. That. I also go to the grocery store and find like the plumpest. We should frozen. post that picture of us slapping that Christmas ham. When yeah. You I love to go to the grocery store and find the plumpest frozen turkey or ham and just like slap it. Like, like it just feels like a nice. Yeah. Slap its ass. Yeah. Slap, slap its ass. It's like, so I recommend everyone try it once. It's, it's pretty <laughs> interesting. I don't know about cutting chicken breast. That freaks me out, but. We got off topic a little bit here. Okay. So, yeah. So, back to the focus. So, Willie would handle the slaughtering and then Pat would have, like, these giant vats of water and would boil the pigs afterwards for about 20 minutes to... Yeah, this was this process was to help him remove the hair off of them afterwards. And then after they would do that, they would take the pigs' carcasses and store them in the freezers. So again, part one, we talked really they're, they're briefly. Large freezers. They got a new business for free. Like right. Freezers. Remember back in the day, uh, the mom, Louise, got those freezers and she would keep the meat Can in there. Can you imagine how unsanitary those freezers you, are? You just read yeah. my mind here. Um, why am I telling you all this? Well, the food inspectors would go to the farm periodically and they had to shut it down several times just because of how foul those freezers were they were oh. never cleaned out ever so they were like rusty there's probably dried blood and lord knows what else right. and most of them weren't even working so i think only three of the freezers were actually um functional. working at that point yeah and functional so uh but yeah the food inspector had to shut down their whole operation there Just not imagine surprised. the smell oh like have you ever had a freezer go out for like 48 hours or something like that with no. meat in it? Oh. I, I haven't personally, but I've worked in a restaurant where it did. Oh, The Picton Farm became just a huge party place for like anybody that was basically like an outlaw, a druggie, a sex worker. They would go down to the Picton place and they knew they can get dope, they can get drunk, have sex. So they were just it's partying like it rain. up. Yeah. Um, also around this time, Lisa Yelds is a woman she um, who lived in that area and she became Willie's best friend. Wow. They had met briefly when they were kids and then years and years later she moved, I, I believe, next door to him or very close to the farm. And then they ended up becoming like really good friends for a long time. Um, she ended up kind of working on the farm and helping out. Like she would help him cut meat 
Interesting. Um, clean. She would try to clean as much as she could the trailer. She was the only one that would like call him out and tell him like, you, you, you reek. You need to take a shower. That's so surprising because I just recalled, as you said that I haven't heard from the previous episode and this, I haven't heard Willie have a friend. Yeah. You well, know, and really I don't didn't. know, you know, and, and even a, you know, a positive, I don't know if she was positive, but she sounds like someone who would hold him accountable. She's, just from that sentence or two sounds fairly normal. So uh, very interesting to have uh, Willie paired up with someone that hopefully brings out something better in him. Yeah, she like I said, she she tried. She tried to, I guess, tell him to like shower because he never would. Uh, what she recalls is that and I'll get a little more to it later, but she recalls him like, I don't know why I can't get this out of my mind, but she recalls like they would like fall asleep together in the trailer and they never hooked up, like had sex, but they would cuddle sometimes. Right. And she'd wake up and just see his like he had really, really pale and bony legs. <laughs> and she would talk about like how pale and like just weird looking his legs were. And he never cut his toenails. And I don't know why <laughs> I have to tell you that he never cut his toenails. It just creeps me out. They're like look like giant cornets. Oh, that's so gross. I don't know why. She said he would brush his teeth a lot. Okay. Remember? We talked about his his dental hygiene. Right. But as far as like showering or clipping his nails, nope. Just take whatever winnings you can get. He brushed his teeth. I guess. He had long dagger toenails, but so gross. <laughs> okay. Um, about a year later in 1996, Dave had this idea of, you know, I have all these outlaws here, the Hells Angels and et cetera, all these other people that are always hanging out and drinking and partying. I think I'm going to build myself a bar. And so one day he was like out doing a demolition uh, job. And he was demoing a bar and he decided to like take bits of the bar home. So he was supposed to knock it down, but he savaged it and brought it to the farm and ended up like I mean, I guess making like sense, a, right? a, a makeshift like bar and started charging okay. people. So he seems like a dumb hick, but I mean, that's business that's wise. Not, that's yeah. Not, that's not stupid. Yeah. I mean, business wise. Right, like he was salvage, quite clever. Yeah. Yeah. So. He did that. And then, it, so in 1996, they created the Piggy Palace. Oh my goodness. Yes. Which was like a party building that they had. That made me hungry. <laughs> and get this. Wait, wait, wait for it. They registered the Piggy Palace as a non profit charity organization. <laughs> and they register it under the name the Piggy Palace Good Time Society. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, the piggy but it was it, but it was a bar society. for the outlaws. It was a, a makeshift bar. bar. It was just everything. Yeah, it was a their party pad. Probably gambled. And when you know, when and they and when they registered it as the nonprofit charity, they they put this um, as its function. Quote: It was listed as to organize, coordinate, manage, and operate special events functions, dances, shows, and exhibitions on behalf of service organizations and other worthy groups. Well, so I that's mean, that's they... a subjective, maybe in their eyes, <laughs> right? that they fall in those categories. But yeah, so they started up their little business there for the Piggy Palace. Um, of course, eventually neighbors... Piggy Palace. Piggy I'm so going about down the Piggy Palace. <laughs> So, <laughs> the so neighbors premise. quickly started complaining uh, about the noise. There was a bunch of drunks everywhere, a bunch of drugs. Piggy Palace was out of control. Yeah, that, that, that place was popping. But like apparently everybody would go there. Not only like outlaws, but like I guess like cops that were not working. So like off, right, off duty. Off duty. Thank yeah. you. Off duty cops would like go there to hang out or party, which is kind of weird to me, but whatever it was I happening guess. it was happening and they had so many parties um it was reported that they had up to 1700 people at a time oh can my you gosh. imagine like i can't even imagine that many people we couldn't imagine 700 pigs oh. right and so they've got a ton of people partying it up yeah, yeah. and in addition to this lisa his best friend later on she kind of recalls that um Aside from them having these parties all the time, on Sundays, they would kind of use this place as um, a gathering for, and I hate this so much, for cockfights. 
What is that? And pig roasts. So cockfights are when they chickens have, fight. Yeah, but they like kill each other. The chickens. Do? Yeah. How do you get chickens to kill each other? I have no idea. Like, how do you I've never try to like hey chicken? Hey, that guy, that that chicken was pecking at your lady. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's I, really I sad. No, no, no. I'm not trying to make a joke out of it, but I've never heard. I've heard of like dog fights, which I think you never heard of a cock fight. Wow. I, I don't. Well, not the kind we're talking about. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. I I didn't know chickens were that strong. Well, I don't know. About, I mean, they're like equally not equally matched because one of them. They put them in a pit. They kind of wind them up. They'll like fuck with them for a while until they kill make each them other? aggressive and then throw them down at each other. But why they take it out on each other? They didn't do it. Yeah. To each other. Why don't they take it out on the human? Can't they just like be friends? They're usually like roosters, so they're a little more aggressive. Yeah, because ro- roosters, that's why they puff out their chest. Yeah, they're yeah. crazy. Ew. <laughs> she just jiggled her chin at me with her hand. <laughs> I always think you guys can see me, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they, they had these cockfights. Um, a lot of the Filipino community would actually show up. They're, like, I guess super into it. And so... They probably do bats and gamble, No, right? Yeah, they yeah. were definitely... That's the whole point, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, the point is to gamble, so... Um, so again, that the butcher he was working with, I'm sure he'd bring in the community. Sure. And so they would have like these big like pig roasts, roasting the pigs out front. And also like they would have like sausages and stuff that they would make for like everybody and charge them and they made their bet, money. They make made, their place yeah. their bets and they got a cut of their the bet, winnings, the winnings and, yeah. and whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they were they were pulling in the money out. Smart businessman. I mean, not the most Horrible, ethical smart, practices. Right. Yeah, but he knew how to make a few dollars. That's true. So the Piggy Palace, um, it it was up. <laughs> I know. I know. Piggy, the Piggy, Piggy Pal- Palace. Was it's like Vegas, running. like Caesar's Palace, <laughs> but this is like instead of Caesar sitting on the throne, you have like this big pig as well with so. overalls. But and then, but they called the brother Piggy. Remember Dave? So it was his palace. It, Piggy, was a, Piggy, it should have been Piggy's Palace. Well, anyway, the Piggy Palace was up and running um, until December 31st of 1998. They had a New Year's Eve party. And from that party, they ended up getting sued. Uh, they violated like a zoning law. And so they were banned from having any more parties there. So the Piggy Palace ran, we said, what, from what, 1996 to 1998, just about okay. until they got in trouble. Later on, now remember, just because the building was in violation doesn't mean that their charity had dissolved yet. So the Piggy Palace Good Time Society, the organization, uh, was still kind of around for a little while. But that ended up, uh, they had to dissolve that a little bit later in January of 2000 because they refused to produce any financial statements from the charity to the city. So they shut them down. That makes sense. So during this time in the 90s, more and more sex workers um, started to go missing in Vancouver. And remember, that was where the rendering plant was. That's where Willie was picking up the yeah, sex workers he was picking grounds. up. Right. Um, and unfortunately, police were just not doing much about it. The fact that these women were going missing, mm-hmm. primarily uh, they didn't have a body. So if people would report the sex workers as missing, police would not only say well we don't have a body um we don't think anything happened they would say things like well she probably ran away well she's a sex worker she's probably a transient well she's a drug addict so who knows missing what it could have been because they were a sex worker absolutely and terrible they did that for a long time um and not only that but the police and politicians prior to this had pushed um all of the prostitutes out of basically any safe neighborhood that was around and they deliberately kept them in the most dangerous area. So it was like Skid Row of that area yes. of Canada, Vancouver. Yes. yes. So they would keep them in the downtown East side of Vancouver, which was Skid Row. Right. Um, the Vancouver mayor in the late eighties, his name was Gordon Campbell. Uh, back then he was actually quoted telling some reporters quote, we do not want hookers around our high schools or our elementary schools. We do not want them in our parks. We do not want them in our residential neighborhoods. And he was basically like, oh, well, that's too bad that these prostitutes are being attacked or that they're being killed. But you know what? Like the citizens just don't want them around. So Mm -hmm. we're just going to push them out. And this is where they're going to end up. Too bad. So sad. So he was he wasn't sorry about it. You know, he was like, yeah, well, right. No, that's it. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And 
not only politicians and police didn't care, but also like the uh, the court system seemed like it was just very like lax. Anybody who committed crimes against uh, sex workers, it seemed like they didn't really get that severe of a punishment. And a prime example that I found was there was a serial killer back then named Gilbert Paul Jordan. And um, back in the day, he would pick up these sex workers and make them drink like a lethal amount of alcohol. So they would have them drink and drink and drink and drink. And he's like, keep drinking, keep going. And he he basically had them drink themselves to death. Wow. And he killed at least 10 women this way. But when and it then, came down yeah, to it, I was about to say, he'd be like, I didn't do it. It's not my fault. They drink. Yeah, it's much. not my fault. Well, he was only charged with one count of manslaughter. And manslaughter was like, well, yeah, oh, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't know. Right. So it went from 10 deaths to only charged for one. And you're going to classify yeah, there it be as any, accidental? There shouldn't be any loopholes with murder. Like I agree. It's so, the system can be so. Ugh, don't even get me started. I messed can up. talk for like, days. I'm like, ugh. We talked about this the other day, you and I, not on the podcast, but about how someone can attempt to kill someone like they had yes. every attempted murder right. attempted and they only murder. get a slap like on the they, wrist they, basically they stabbed the person but they didn't stab them enough to kill them and they don't get charged for oh my murder. god just you wait to what i have to say about that it's just mind-blowing to yes. me yes during this time uh sex workers decided that they were gonna have to band together and so there's these women um like I said, even if they didn't really know each other or if they might have been like rivals before, they put all that aside and they decided to all work together and keep an eye out for one another. Because mm -hmm. no matter what they reported to police, nothing happened. Nothing was enforced. The women weren't found. They weren't taken seriously. Nobody gave a shit. So they decided to create a bad date list. So if if one of them went with, you know, with someone, a John, and he ended up being violent or whatever the case may be didn't pay whatever mm -hmm. they would add them to this list and then they would inform each other to try to keep each other safe like oh don't go with this guy you know x y and z Especially for that yes. time it's not like they had social media like right now we can right. probably do things way more efficiently online have a mm -hmm. database but for that time that's really smart and right and they also recorded um license plate numbers so when Very one of smart. them would get in a car, they'd write down the plate number. And again, it was like you the buddy you system. Do. You got to do what you got to do at that point to keep yourself safe, especially when law enforcement or the system isn't doing anything to protect you. Yes, absolutely. Poor, those poor women. Yeah. It's and scary. In, in 86, um, a lot of the missing women that were reported, remember, they're like, oh, we can't do anything. Well, in 86, they actually uncovered um, a lot of their bodies had turned up. So... What happened was uh, the RCMP, which is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they set up like this task force to look into all these unsolved homicides of these sex workers. And so they came up with some suspects and Willie was on the suspect list, but they said there wasn't enough evidence to do anything. So nothing was done. Oh, they yeah. said they looked into it for three years and then they disbanded it um, in 89. So that never nothing came of it. Yeah. Um, eventually, the sex workers would even go to the police themselves, Vancouver police and the and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police as well. They gave them license plates of people that were really suspicious. Um, they gave them their bad date list so they could start looking into these right. people. Do some background checks. Sure. They gave them like, yeah, right. eyewitness accounts of like crimes that were happening, but nothing was done. They weren't taken seriously. Uh, it, it got so bad that the sex workers and their families just stopped reporting these women missing oh. because there was like, seriously, like there was, like, yeah, there was no point. Anytime their families would call the police and say, my daughter is missing. She's yes. She works as a sex worker in this part of Vancouver. They would always be met with, well, you know, she is a drug addict. You know, they're very unreliable. Maybe it's she horrible. just took off. And these it's poor like moms gaslighting would be like, them. They were yeah. being gaslit. And the, the moms would say, well, no, there's no way because she has a daughter. She has a two-year-old. She would have never left her daughter. Well, you know, that's just her lifestyle. We don't know that she, anything happened to her. We don't know that she's actually missing because she's she's a prostitute. Maybe she ran away. Maybe she's partying. Maybe she's too doped up to call you. And so they would just, you know. It sounded like you said 89 to like 98 or somewhere in, uh, in that amount of time. You kind of mentioned 89 and oh, the yeah. story had been. 
So in, so in 1986 is when a lot of the missing women's like bodies started turning up. Okay. And then that's when they created the task force. But in 89, they disbanded, disbanded it. it. Yeah. And this, this just kept happening. So the missing women kept, hap they just kept, you know, the numbers just kept continuing to grow. And it went, like I said, kind of like through like mid 80s all the way till I believe it was 2002. Wow. So a long time that these Very missing women That's and and no one was doing anything unacceptable. Yeah, they just did and they were not just getting, care. I mean, gaslighting to the T right there, like nonstop. Well, oh well, they. It's essentially saying, well, they deserved it because they're in unsafe situations or they're doing this or that. It's like instead of blaming the sex workers. Why aren't we looking at the terrible people doing things to them? It's like I said, to the missing women and the sex workers being um, not taken seriously. Well, I'm going to take you guys back to the story of Wendy. Yes, I was gonna, yes, I've been waiting. So after the elderly couple rushed her to the ER, she actually uh, passed away for a brief moment. They revived her. Wow. Who, who revived her? The old people? Uh, Superman. Well, I don't know. Was she at the hospital? Or did, <laughs> yeah, know. she's at the ER. Why? Oh, okay. I... <laughs> Superman revived her. No, yeah. So they they revived her. Uh, she was able to make a recovery. So she's full. She's fully recovered. But as she's in the hospital being treated, she's like talking to the hospital staff because, of course, they're like, "What the hell happened?" Right. Um, oh. And she tells them what happened. They call the police, and when the police arrive, they determine that. As she's there getting treated, she still's got the handcuff on her, by the way, because he had slapped the cuff on her hand. As she's getting treated in the hospital, as she's recovering in the hospital bed, they figure out that Willie Picton is in the room just a few doors <gasps> down from her. Oh, my God. At the same hospital. This is like a horror movie to me. And this right? is real life. But it, I just. I yes. just. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, my anxiety my yes. anxiety oh my gosh he was just a few doors down because that is he also had chilling. to go to the hospital because she chilling. she got him right she slashed him and so he was there getting treated for his wounds oh my gosh and when he was admitted they asked him what happened and he goes oh yeah some heroin addicts or crack whore you know she tried to rob me and um take my money so that's what happened she attacked me and she slashed my chest oh my or whatever gosh. like what that's seriously chilling so once when, when after police talked to wendy they of course were like oh wait there's this other guy down the hall he has some slash wounds yeah hmm. convenient that you convenient. both came in at the same time yes. and or around the same time so the police go over to his room and they find in his pocket the key to the handcuffs oh and they walk this so the police go back over to her room and they oh, uncuff sure her. enough. Yep. So, I mean, right there, right? right. Like, you you have the key oh. that had you tried to detain this woman. It fits the handcuffs. The so. suspense. Yep. So, at that point, Willie is arrested, and he's charged with attempted murder, Willie. assault with a weapon, and forcible confinement. Oh, attempted murder, So It's like this chick has her intestines hanging right. out. Oh, but don't worry. And she died for a moment. But she don't died worry. Guess what? prosecutors actually said oh you know what we're just gonna drop the attempted murder what? charge altogether. why but well what? because this apparently wendy was too unstable she was too unreliable to, oh my god to, to be um a witness in her own defense because she's just a prostitute and a druggie oh so my you goodness. know we can't really trust what she's saying what kind of bullshit is that so uh so, so he literally like didn't get in trouble at all basically for that you, you mentioned that she died i feel like you could almost go after him for like you murdered somebody and we right. happened to that's what, we're saying. Right. That that's what i said how yeah, do you even right? even say attempted murder like you did murder you, her you and murdered her she was dead it's just so infuriating i yeah i can't i can't i don't even know i i can't i feel like in a lot of cases i don't know as many as most people but in a lot that i've heard like i was watching the richard ramirez night stalker documentary on netflix and stuff and you see all these like missed attempts to like capture someone oh my you're gosh like, you're you reading know, my mind and like, you're like my notes that's what we're gonna go into next <laughs> you taken things seriously because it was <laughs> incredibly serious 
you may you could have saved so many people's lives and i see this in the few documentaries i've watched it's like you want to pull your hair out of your head because right look how many it's lives like right there in front of you look how many right right there in front of you you had more than enough information to make a that call you know and mm -hmm. you i don't know i i don't understand it's just well i'll tell you this was the first time that he should have been caught there's more, but the there shit are more times that he should have been caught and wasn't. So a year later in 1998, there was a phone call placed and it was an anonymous tip line um, about the missing women. So someone had called and told them, hey, you should really investigate this guy named Willie Picton. We think he's up to something. I've, you know, I've seen a women's clothes around his property that don't belong to anyone you should really kind of take a peek nothing was ever done nothing at all like they didn't even try to get like a search warrant especially having question him especially how he has a record to some degree now because of the woman i forget her name the sex worker that was in the hospital he's got a if if someone put an anonymous tip in they should have been able to look in the system and be like oh wait he does have some kind of record he's done this and this and this and like maybe that should be a red flag that maybe you should take it seriously you think, and you would think and dig so. deeper you would think so a year after that in 1999 there was a farm employee and he called the police to report that well i don't want to say i'm going to tell you a story about it but there was uh so one of the employees on the farm called police to also say hey one of my friends told me that she saw this this and this and i'm going to tell you the story because it's better that way. So eventually, uh, this woman named Lynn ended up also working on the farm. She was 29 years old and she had kind of seen weird things. Um, I guess, like I said, like kind of like women's clothing and, and just she had a bad feeling. She heard rumors also about Willie and the things he was doing. One day she, for example, she went up to his brother Dave and said, hey, can I ask you something? I heard that there's a rumor going around about your brother. And he's like, Dave's like, oh, really? Well, here, let's step into this trailer over here. They had a bunch of trailers, by the way, on the farm. Step into this trailer here and tell me about it. Okay. So they step into this trailer and she goes, well, I heard that there's rumors of like human arms and legs uh, stashed in the freezers here on site. And Dave was Willie's brother just straight up like bitch slaps her in the face. Oh and was my like, don't gosh. you ever fucking mention that again. Like, mind your damn business, bitch, basically. Oh and so the, the girl was like, okay, sorry, sorry. So she's like, just, you know, she's I mean, obviously pretty terrified. ballsy of her to tell his, you know. Well, she's telling the brother probably, I don't know, but she's probably thinking, well, I, I, this is what I heard. You're his brother. Right. Maybe she, I don't know. I mean, who knows I mean, what kind I'm of relationship saying, I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying that's No, yeah, of course. I, I'd be like, I ain't touching your damn farm if you got arms and feet in the freezer. Yeah. So in 1999, Lynn starts to kind of hang around Willie a little more. He's having her do like more um, just like little odd jobs around the house. Like she would try to clean here and there, kind of like uh, what his friend was trying to do for him. But Lynn was also there. Is the friend still in the picture? Yeah, she's she's yeah. Lisa yelled. She's around. Is Lynn who got slapped? Yes. So Lynn got slapped and she continued and she heard Lynn, there's Lynn arms got and slapped. feet in the freezer she didn't see them. She, just she heard, heard rumors. She heard right. It, right. But she, she got slapped continued. by Dave. Well, and then Willie told her later, he's like, oh, he told her, Dave doesn't want you around here, so you better keep out of his way. Now, Lynn at the time, like I said, she was kind of young, 29. Um, remember that Willie's got a lot of money. Yeah. He's probably given her a lot of money. He's paying for a lot of her stuff. Right. And so for her, it was like a lifeline, I'm sure. An opportunity of some sort. Yeah. Right. So she was hanging around him as friends i don't believe they ever hooked up but uh she was definitely part of his life and it didn't seem like willie mistreated her he was just mm -hmm. weird mm -hmm. and stinky and a murderer but other than that he was cool <laughs> <laughs> other than those things he was all right so one day willie decides that he needs to run some errands and he asks lynn to come along with him she's like okay whatever and so they're kind of like driving around town and instead of going to where he says he's going to take her, he ends up going to the kind of like the skid row area to pick up a sex worker. And he tells Lynn, hey, do you care if we make the stop? I want to pick up like a, a hooker, essentially. Uh -huh. 
And Lynn's like, I don't care. Sure, whatever. And Lynn was also um, addicted to drugs, I believe uh, crack cocaine. And, and Willie was supplying her with the drugs every single day. Right. So that was another incentive for her. And when you're, when right. you're an addict, it's like, you're going to keep that, you're going to keep that line of communication mm. good and open because you want your stuff. Got it. So, you know, they're driving around and she's telling him, I also, can we also pick up some stuff for me? You know, right. some drugs. And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. So they pick up her crack. Then they go and pull up beside um, the sex worker and the sex worker kind of like notices the truck that they're in. And at first she is hesitant. And then she notices that Lynn is in the truck with Willie and a woman seeing another woman right, there is going to assume comfort yeah, there. there. It's like, like safe. Right. Okay. There's another, and, then, and she had her crack pipe out. So the sex worker was like, sweet. Let's party. Can I get a hit off of that? Yeah. yeah so right. they're like, smoking their crack together in, the, in their truck, you know, doing their thing. And they end up taking her back to the farm. And the three of them, Lynn, Willie, and the other lady's name, enter the trailer. And Lynn recalls that Willie and the sex worker enter, like, the bedroom area. Mm -hmm. And as they're in there, she hears, like, this screaming sound. And Lynn's like, I don't know that's just like such a weird like sound that I'm hearing. Right. It doesn't sound like they're, it's not pleasurable. Yeah. It it's not like, like a pleasurable sound. And so she decides to open the bedroom door, but they're gone. They're not in the bedroom anymore. So I guess they're, I'm, I'm assuming might there's have like a, a back door. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so she goes out the back door and it's now evening. And as she goes out towards the back, she notices that there's a light on next to the slaughterhouse where he would slaughter all the pigs. Oh, gosh. I don't want to I just, like, envision, like, total, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm telling Devil's you, this Rejects, is, like, like, I feel like this is, like, three different horror movies in I one. I know. It's insane. It's, it's like, the, and the fact that horror movies are made to be scary, to get reactions out of the viewer. This is real life. This actually happened. I cannot tell, and it sounds scarier than any horror movie I've seen. And so she recalls walking past, I guess like a kitchen area, but she's walking towards this like slaughterhouse. Like I said, she sees the light on, she hears like a weird noise. Oh, God. And as she's approaching the slaughterhouse area, she just said that she remembers this really horrendous smell. Like, it was just a horrible, horrible smell. And I'm going to read this excerpt from the book On the Farm because I just think it's so well written. And this is what she says, quote, As I started approaching the barn, there was a really rude smell. It was awful. I got to the front door, the doors of the barn, and pushed the door open. And all I could see were these legs, these feet dangling. So I was just standing there. I was kind of frozen and I yelled, Willie! And he came from behind the door and he grabbed me. Oh. Grabbed me by my arm. And I had to go in. We walked in, walked up to the table, which was really shiny. I remember it being like bright. There was a light. It wasn't the light that was on normally. It was a light in the back, kind of back in the barn, kind of just the way it was angled. And he made me stand at the end of the table. I just remember, I remember just feeling not well. I was going to be sick. I had nothing in my stomach. I was dry heaving. It was, the odor was awful. I'd seen these legs. I didn't move my eyes around. I just was in shock. And at my eye level, I could see these legs, toes, red nail polish on them. They were colored. I seen hair on the table. And I don't know what else was on the table, but it wasn't pretty. Oh. And so later we come to find out what she saw was the sex worker they had picked up. He had scalped her. Oh, my gosh. So the hair was. Her, oh, my gosh. Yeah, her hair on the table. Oh, and my gosh. Her body was hanging from a meat hook. Oh, my goodness. So he I'm like, just, how do you even recover i'm supposed to get dinner tonight and i'm seriously so paranoid to leave the house now how do you re you're welcome <laughs> seriously i was gonna get a burger i'm like i don't think i can do it i'm just gonna have to get like some cucumber or something now <laughs> that's seriously how do you recover from that yeah a, uh, i mean this stuff gets stuck in my head for as long as it does i can't imagine being the woman 
oh, or the person, horrible. whoever, standing and seeing a scalped head or scalp, you know, scalp on the table and then a body hanging on above you where you have this poor woman's toes right at your eye level. Yeah. And then he made her st- sit in there. So while he, he didn't. So Lynn was her name. The yes. Friend. Yes. So he didn't try to go after Lynn. He was just like, let me show you like what I do. No, no, no. He didn't. He, she stumbled in on that. He, he but didn't you would think that he would it? be enraged at that. I, when you told me that she saw the light on, obviously he wanted to get caught and it was like to some this, degree like, old light because, bulb like, like dangling why, on the right. barn and like, like well to well, me it's like why would you so ask creepy. your friend to join you to pick up a because sex worker at this point the sex workers were not going with him they didn't trust so, i mean him. but he didn't he he was right, like but flagged. he didn't care to get caught by your friend because there were well that's what he, he tells, wasn't like yeah he wasn't like oh you know can you go get some food and come back later like no 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 right. she was in the same trailer she hears this horrific screaming that doesn't sound like normal they're getting right. down and then she, he leaves the light on the slaughterhouse she makes her way there and if he was really upset that this woman lynn walked in on his killings he would have killed her too he has no problem killing anyone but right. i feel like so it's like did you want some i don't know an accomplice? Did you want some credit? No, Did he you didn't. Want- In fact, he tells an undercover officer later on that um, he could have kept going, but he got, quote, sloppy. Like, he got careless. Oh. So this is probably part Is this of- in the later years of his um, killings? Th- not entirely. This is in 1999. He didn't get caught till 2002. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So he was killing... When do you think his first kill was? Do you have an idea? Oh, I would imagine in mid mid to late 80s he was killing people let's say then let's just be gracious and say the late 80s then Mm -hmm. to 2000 until 2002 yes for over a decade yep well he killed 49 oh my god 49 women what a freak he admitted to again the undercover officer oh my goodness so he had a tally too like he knew he he was like this is absolutely victim number Mm -hmm. 10 20 30 yeah so as Lynn is like standing in there, she's in shock. And he says to her, quote, it's okay. She's just like a pig anyways. It's all right. No. It's all going to be all right. Oh, my gosh. So he has some sort of respect for Lynn at this point. Like- right. Lynn and Lisa, both of them. Yeah, because he never. And at this point, Lisa is not in on any of this. Lynn is the only. Well, she's she. As of today, she's never been convicted of anything. Okay. But people have been kind of like, I mean, a lot of people are like, basically. If he could show Lynn, why wouldn't he let Lisa in on some parts of that? You're over there. You're cleaning his house. You see all these random IDs and purses and bloody clothing. Right. You had to have fucking known something. And then when they confronted Lisa later on. She said, um, well, I just didn't want to cooperate with police because I don't like police. And I didn't want to be like part of like anything. I didn't want to get involved. Yikes. So it's like you obviously knew something. Right. I don't personally. I don't. If think you didn't know anything, anyone, you would but... have no issue. Yeah, I mean, exactly. everyone's different. You everyone's different. But issue, like, reporting even it. if you didn't like cops, because some people just don't like cops for whatever reason. But if you right. were if you knew someone who killed 49 people and you had no idea even of it. Even two you can, people, even yeah, one I know. person. But, yeah, I mean, let's just like, say something as awful as, I mean, one is awful, but you would think that you would be, even if you didn't like cops. Yeah, it's not about the cops. It's about how about getting some justice? How about saving right, future victims? Right, this is for victims. the people that, exactly. And for the victims' families and for, the, yeah, like you said, closure, future victims. Right. Like, maybe there's something that you didn't think was too suspicious that could be a huge culprit in the case to, you know, bring this guy down. Yep, absolutely. Yep. That's 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 a little sus. That's a little suspicious. Now, mind you, like I said, during the same year, in fact, I think it was right after this, Lynn had ended up telling one of the other workers on the farm. Um, I, I, I believe it was this guy named Bill. And I'll tell you why in a second. But this guy calls it in and he tells police, this is what my friend saw on the farm. The police don't go do you think he was like paying? Do you think they were like paying the police? That was one of the like. Because I mean, I'm like, you had, you each had like at least two mil, and then some cops were going over there to, to party to the, to the piggy, piggy pen, pen or whatever it was called, <laughs> the piggy pen. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be that 
Shut I up. mean, I mean, come on. There's some crooked shit yeah. going on. You, I mean, maybe not, but I, I, mean, I, I yeah. So Especially the, if the cops are partying there. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So the cops actually like interview her well, I, initially. Can I say something. Yeah. And I go back to your first episode, which you have not closed out this story yet, but of, I think his name was Bill or someone found Bill? a skull. Or a, oh yes, a skull and and the. They didn't really, they didn't really like follow up on oh, yeah, how so they thought the it were just like, mm -hmm. oh no, this was just from a grave. It just got it washed, just, like, washed up. down. Yeah, yeah. Like, so all of this collectively. Um, yeah. There's just really, so many right, things. There's so many layers where you're like, this, are they in someone's pocket? Or? Right. That's a very good point because there, ugh, it just keeps happening and happening and happening. And right. Yeah. So, so the police actually uh, decide to interview Lynn right after it was reported to them. But during this first interview, she denies it. She's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see anything. I don't know anything. And I mean, I personally think is she's afraid of any repercussions because again, Dave slapped her. They have all these hell's angels roaming around all, all these right. criminals. He sees what Willie did to that lady. Right. I mean, she's probably terrified to snitch on him. Number two, she is getting her drug supply I was from say, Willie. That's her supplier. That's her supplier. That's yeah. she's getting all her, her income and all her drugs from him. Yeah. So it's like, is she going to cut off her lifeline? You know, there's a few things going against her here. And then later on, she does admit uh, to the police later down the line that she did see that. And I, there was one thing I read somewhere where she made this statement to that guy, Bill, the other farm employee. And she said, like, oh, I didn't know that human fat was that white. Like, because like, how would you know? What human or no, I'm fat? sorry. I didn't know that human fat was yellow. That's what she said. Yellow. How would you know the color? Exactly. Of human fat? If you didn't see anything, how would you know the color of human fat? Like, why would you? even think to make that comment also again in the same year 1999 bill hiscox uh he was the farm employee that she told he calls police again and he tells them that willie is acting really weird that the farm is just kind of creepy he tells the rcmp that he believes that a lot of the missing women that have been reported and you know that are on the flyers and whatnot around that time that he, he notices that their belongings are on the farm so he's oh, calling wow. the place is like hey that's like you should dude, really right. check out willie picton i'm telling you i've seen items of clothing or purses or whatever from sure. these missing women around the farm and they the cops tell him oh well that sucks but you know what we can't get a search warrant just based on like you telling us that we need either an eyewitness so someone that sees the body or sees him doing something or I, we need some kind of physical evidence. It's like, yes, I, I'm trying to get you here to check for physical evidence. Right. They didn't do it again. Later on that year, 1999, same year again, another farm employee anonymously called police again. This time he reported that he found human flesh in some of oh the freezers gosh. on the farm. Oh my God. Please get a search warrant this time. Finally. They never searched the farm. So the court issues the warrant and the cops still don't go fucking check. That's horrible. I don't get it. I don't get it. So, and it's so like it's morbid too. It's not like they're saying like, it's not a small thing that they're yeah, like, we're, I'm you're, finding human, human flesh, flesh in the freezer. And then also you're not just saying, Hey, this guy's kind of sketchy and he has like some stuff that belonged to women. No, no, no. You're saying, the women that have gone missing, I'm yeah, finding their I noticed purse that there's or their this belongings. This. So there is an obvious link. And if your system, if the police system doesn't allow them to have, you know, a warrant, then you should at least care and figure out how to find a workaround right. to get into that house. But the fact that you're dismissing it, like, oh, well, like it, it's, it's absolutely horrible. So years go on, years uh, pass by, nothing happens. Finally, in 2002, an employee that briefly worked on the farm named Scott Chubb reports that there are illegal firearms on site. And so he tells the cops, is that, hey, is these... that what did it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So not, like, the, not the human flesh. 
Well, and, and I, I really do believe that Scott wanted them to find it because yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa. I'm not dissing Scott. Right, no, no, yeah. That's what it took. Yeah, that's what it took. Yeah, yeah, because he was an eyewitness to these illegal firearms. Yeah, but wasn't the other guy an eyewitness to human flesh? I, I hear you. I mean, I'm all mad at I you. I hear you. I know. How dare well, you? And that's not the thing. They, the got, they had the search way. warrant, they, they had just, it. They, they, legally, they had it been crooked. They had it been crooked. Right, I, yeah. How are you going to say, I found human flesh right here, or this is where I found it, but you, that's the one place you don't go look? Like, yep. it's. Just, they were in the piggy pen. They were in the freaking. The piggy pen. They, <laughs> the piggy palace. I love it. They were, the, the cops were pen. in. They were probably getting paid, getting a cut, and they were getting paid to look the other way. For sure. I, I, I really do believe so. Well, especially this is. 99 2000 so yeah, that's not that long ago usually i usually have the excuse well, like, this 20. is 70s or 80s they don't have you know backlogs they don't have science yeah. and all this kind of stuff but they do yeah we have computers now yeah <laughs> right so finally uh the royal canadian mountain police gets their search warrant they search the premises they find illegal illegal firearms um on the farm they also find the some of the missing women's belongings so since they found their belongings they yeah, go like back three years later i know they go back they get another court order which then allows them to do a more in-depth search of the premises and this time to search for anything Skin, related to parts, yes the missing women anything. so during their second search this is what police and investigators find they find some of the victim's skulls cut oh. in half. Remember part one? Uh, I'm waiting for that conclusion. The skulls were stuffed with human hands and feet. Whoa, the skulls were stuffed? Yes, so he would cut off their hands and feet, cut their skulls in half lengthwise, uh -huh. and like use grind them. Grind up the hands and put it in there? I like don't He was, or putting the bones of the hands, but he was putting their hands and feet in the skull. Don't know why. That's so ritualistic almost. Right? Yeah. So creepy. They were able to get, uh, they found D different DNA from at least 33 different women. Wow. There is suspected to be a lot more DNA, but they couldn't, they couldn't like defini definitively say that, like how many, because yeah. the, the, the DNA that they did recover was from just teeny tiny fragments of bone like so small and i'll talk about why in just a minute um so they had a very very difficult very uh it was just a very like trying thing for them to have to get all this dna and to figure it out but at least from 33 different women they found bloody women's clothing bloody clothing that would belong to willie which some of it was pig's blood but some of it was also human blood they found a human jawbone human teeth they found a 22 revolver, so a gun, that had a dildo attached to the barrel of the gun. That's so bizarre. Like, so was he like doing them? I'm not trying to be mean, like sticking no, it places yeah. and then like, I, I'm in no way not, put it I'm past not trying him. to sound disrespectful. No, but, but I, like, mean, I mean, he was probably what? shoving it up there. And then blowing the gun? Either he was shooting them that way or just scaring them to death with it that's he, he, so sick he's got some weird kink because remember you described that trailer just being a total mess and then he had right. furry handcuffs I yeah know, yeah right. so now he's got a dildo i was thinking on. like purple like cheetah print fur handcuffs or something i was thinking yeah, like hot pink yeah yeah <laughs> i was thinking of the two together <laughs> yeah so yeah that's so and then like in court sick. when they like brought that up he's like oh, oh i would just use it as a silencer Okay. A dildo. A dildo, really? You what? <laughs> Dude, we already know you're a sick fuck. Don't yeah, try to say disgusting. you try to use it as a silencer. You he's so gross. Uh they also found three fifty seven magnum rounds, two pairs of fur handcuffs. So maybe he did have Why a didn't he just have fur handcuffs? That's what I want. Why do you have two pairs? Hands and feet. I know, but why don't you just have regular handcuffs? Maybe he liked the fur. I don't know. Weirdo. He had a pair of night vision goggles, which, oh, can oh you imagine God. this like fucker? Weird. Like, all coming through yeah, the woods like with stalking his, with you. With his furry handcuffs and his, his night, night vision goggles. <laughs> his furry handcuffs. And God. his dildo gun. No, thanks. <laughs> it's like, it's really sick and really sad, but it's like such a bizarre image in your head. I know. What the, it's like comical because it's so disgusting. Right. You, like, you were like, you, if you saw it in a movie, you'd be like, oh, fucking weird writer. Maybe. <laughs> this like like 
absurd killer with a dildo gun and a purple leopard print furry handcuffs and then <laughs> maybe it was a and then his night leopard. vision goggles like do you think it was like batman he had all these gadgets apparently so i, th- I didn't even know night vision goggles existed <laughs> you never seen signs of the lambs one buffalo bill oh yeah yeah there's the so Tucker. many there's so many elements that are i'm like oh that movie that movie that movie that movie right that movie, that movie. yeah they're the only thing I haven't heard or I haven't seen in a movie is the the handcuffs and the dildo. The furry handcuffs, yeah. because that would totally take you. You'd be like, that's kind of lame. Yeah. Is that mean of me to say? No. I he mean, is lame. He is. And he's a horrible person. Fuck that guy. Is he dead? No, he's in jail. <gasps> he's not dead? He's not dead. There's also, they also found pictures of garbage can and in the garbage can, there were like human remains. Oh my god! Just like kind of like spilling out of it. So... They he just had the stuff laying around, well, like gar- like human remains, and I mean, there was the pictures of it. Oh, pictures, yeah. Um, on on one of the sources I found, it said that they found some human scalps that were kind of like just just dried dry. out, yeah. And a, seriously, and a so... bucket of like guts and intestines, like human. Oh my god! So, so do we know? Did was. Um, what's his name? Frank? What's his brother's name? Dave. Dave. Was Dave like part of this? Was he? They haven't convicted him of anything. I read something so. the other day and I forget what it was. It was about Dave though, that he's like trying to start another nonprofit or some charity thing. Oh yeah. I People are like so up in arms, obviously. Like why would anybody yeah. filter any sort of money? And he's saying he's going to give it to some charity. And this is recent. Like, I think yeah. it was like, well, his business is still valid. Like he still has his business to this day. I looked it up the other day. Yeah. It's like still like, you can still like hire them. No of, thanks. Um, trying to find pictures of their mom. And that's what I came across. So witness testimony, uh, along with like police theories on how he killed his victims. Um, this was brought up in trial and I'll go into the trial in just a second, but there was a witness tape and on the witness tape, this person had said that Willie would bring in the sex workers, obviously over to the farm. He would handcuff them, rape them, strangle them to death. Then he would have them like bleed out. I imagine by so stringing the them same up, way. gutting them. And then he would run their bodies through a wood chipper. Oh my gosh. And what's f- wrong with this guy and feed the remains like what came out of the wood chipper to his pigs oh and then he would slaughter the pigs mm-hmm. that had humans mm-hmm. inside yep. i mean human yeah, yeah. that ate the humans yeah and then he would sell the pigs for for feed for chopped up meat <laughs> to sell to oh my god well the, the parties remember the sausage I, i've had the yep. sausage in my head the whole oh time oh my gosh that's my next that's my next Todd thing and the meat pies that's, i thought that too yeah so another claim said that the victim's bodies were ground up, like I said, and oh. mixed with pork meat, turned into oh sausages, which were given out during their parties at the Piggy Palace. He would also... So the brother had to know something. How are you going to not know that there's... <sighs> How does the brother not know all this is going down? Okay. I'm sure he knew. Come on. Give me a fucking and That's break. why he slapped that poor woman for saying Yeah, it's like, heard, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, don't you dare say that stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting here serving his human brotsworth to whoever yep. is coming through the door. <laughs> but yeah. That's so, so and sick. And this meat would be handed out to friends and family and people at the party. Oh, my gosh. Parties. Police believe... I wonder what effed up stuff I've eaten in my life. Like, I don't know. I don't about. even want to know. I'm like, not saying it's human, ooh. but like, can you imagine? I probably like eating rat and I had no idea. Yeah. Ooh. You just never know. You never know you unless never you're know. going out and killing the animal yourself. And, right. You know, from right, right. start to finish. So you never oh. know. So police believe that Willie would pick up these workers, drug them, because a lot of them were addicted to drugs, have sex with them. Murder them mostly by strangulation. String them up on the hook. Oh. Then they Just, would bleed out. Oh. He would remove their insides, like their intestines and such. Why? Why do all this stuff? Because this he wanted to get rid of the bodies. So then he would take the body down, put it on his big butcher block. He would scalp them because when you're feeding a body through the wood chipper, the hair can get it can get oh. tangled up and ruin the wood chipper. So the human scalping was because he didn't want to ruin his wood chipper. Is that why, um, 
he said on the butcher block, the woman who saw him go through this process said that the butcher, the table was like shiny. Is that from the blood? Yeah. Or, or it was like a metal table, you oh, know, like okay. a metal, like, like shiny because there's so much. Blood oh, on maybe. It that yeah. Like a reflection, you know. Uh, sure. I'm or sure both. that could have been it. Yeah. Oh. So he would remove their hair and dismember them. Oh, my God. So chop up chop. arms, feet, yes. torso. Uh huh. So mm. that goes back to the hands and feet. Some for some reason on the skulls, and I was about to say, like for you, I mean, I'm gonna put my hands against my head here, okay? Because I'm like, would my hand fit in my head? Yeah. Well, what about my fat foot? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it had to be. It was cut in half, so it could be sticking up like a bowl. I guess. You know, I was just trying to envision that. Like, where's it? It's not like he up? crammed it through an ice. I don't know. If he just, just like ground like, up the hands and the feet, and I, it was like pe- lots of pieces. I, I, I was don't really know. curious when you said that. Yeah. So yeah, so he would dismember them and then feed their corpses to into the meat grinder, right? Ground them up oh. and feed the ground up corpses to his pigs. And to his guest with sausage. Sure. So then so the pigs Jeez. are taking care of the meat part of the human. And then any like hair or bone that couldn't go through the meat grinder was taken to the rendering plant. To make Remember West cosmetics Coast? Yes. and turned into gelatin, which went into candy oh my and God. makeup. Thanks, Willie. Don't know if I have a poor lady's yeah, body parts in my in makeup my, now. Thank right. you. I eat sugar-free jello all the time and that has gelatin in it. Right? You never know. I don't know. I'm sure it does. Is there gelatin and jello? That's so weird how they make gelatin and it's out, like of out of that. I, I always out of like hooves and, and stuff. stuff like, yeah, right? out of yeah. Hooves and that's all I knew. I'm, really. Yeah, that's so gross. Thanks for ruining my Jello night tonight. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> Ugh, so gross. Um, another witness uh, testified that Willie was selling this minced human meat that he would mix with pork Jeez. meat. And in this fact, is so fucked up. I know. In fact, in 2004. The Canadian like health department had to send out this announcement in that area. Can you imagine living in oh Port gosh. Coquitlam and they have to give this announcement that you may, you have, may eaten. have eaten fucking human meat? That's seriously. And if I, you oh. purchased like sausages or whatever between this time and this time, you may have eaten a human. Oh my God. Horrible. Seriously. Like, and they would quote unquote donate sausages all the time to charity for orphanage for oh. orphans oh, they would give them away at the piggy palace to their guests they would Fucking sell them palace. to the stores in the local area and they would gift these sausages to foster kids in the area so like how fucked, fucked up, up they probably got you? so like they probably loved it and i'm, I'm not talking about right people. i'm talking about willie and his oh and his i'm sure, sure. Brother. Like, I'm sure they're like, yeah, not only did we fucking kill these people, but, but you now, fuckers ate it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They oh probably God. looked at that like a fucking trophy for themselves. I Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Sick. Oh, my God. So that's why when I said they can only confirm 33 women from the DNA evidence, it's because... he was grinding it all up. Yeah, and, and so the police were to- literally like sifting through tons of like pig feces on the farm oh God. to to collect what they could, a bone fragment even happen? here like, and why? there. Like, I just don't understand. Like, what, how does someone come to want to kill 49 women? And then not only, it's not like a lazy kill. Like, it was, <laughs> so, well, I mean, some people just shoot someone and they're out, you know, and that's right. terrible just the same. But to have this same routine where he's like, I'm going to have sex with them. I'm going to drug them up. I'm going to have sex with them. I'm going to choke them. And then I'm going to hang them. I'm going to scalpel them i'm going to drain them of their blood i'm going to put them through a wood chip gut them like right take out their intestines it's, there's and to do that 40 to do it once is awful to do it 49 times he loved it just like he loved slaughtering pigs he loved it like if you guys none look of them at, were men if you look no up one, no so why women do we know Has probably he said? because he's a puss and he figured he could overpower them easily Plus, now, these he, women plus have... look at the kind of women he was picking up. I'm not saying this to be disrespectful, but he was picking up women that he thought no one would miss. Right. And when their well, families the did miss them, the right. right. And when the families did miss missing. them, right. right, the police didn't give a shit. Right. So now, did these women, was there like a, besides them being sex workers, was there another similarity? Did Was there a type? 
No, no. He hates women. I mean, we've talked about this in the last two episodes. Yeah. Like, he was a woman hater. I think his mom put a lot of evil in that Crazy whole Louise. family. And Wasn't that her name, Louise? Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, it's just, it almost seems like they feel successful off of the amount of evil that they could create, you know? Yeah. It's so terrible. So why is he not dead? <laughs> is he on death row? Is that a thing in Canada? Um, you no. don't know no. here. I do know. Here's what we'll, I'll get into it now, actually. So his trial began on January 30th, 2006. And initially the, he was going to be charged with 27 counts of first degree murder. And later it was dropped to 26 counts because of the evidence that they had. It wasn't enough to 27. So as they're about to start this trial, of course, he says he pleads not guilty, by the way. Oh, I didn't do it. So the judge. I don't know how all these bodies yeah, got in my farm. I didn't mean to do it. So the judge decides he's going to split up these murder charges into two separate trials. And he does this because he says it would be just like, it would just be too much for a jury to handle all 26 murders. Yeah. But also, and this is why I think he really did it is because he had evidence that was quote materially different for six of the murders. So he split it. So Willie was on trial for six murders. That was the first trial. And they had a lot of evidence for these six murders. So I think the judge did it because he really wanted to convict this guy. Right. He, he didn't, didn't want, want him to get away. To have like a, well, maybe it wasn't or right. Maybe he didn't want that like doubt. Hard, hard evidence. Yes. And so he went on trial for six counts of murder. And in December of 2007, so about two years passed, Willie was found guilty, but he was found guilty of second degree murder. What? But I know that was my first thought too. Like, what the fuck? Like, how is a second degree murder? Like he's, but the judge still gave him the maximum sentence he was allowed to give him in Canada. So it would have been, it was easier for them to convict him of second degree murder and the judge still gave him the same punishment. Got it. So whether it would have been first or second, the punishment was going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So in, in Canadian law, he, he was allowed to give him life in prison, but he has the possibility of parole after 25 years, Damn. meaning he'll be eligible he would have been up soon, right? Well, not out, but eligible for parole on February 22nd, 2032. Oh my gosh. And so, that and the freak, oh my yeah, God. which doesn't mean he's probably never going to get oh, out. There's like no fucking though? way. Like There's having... no way. But yeah, to parole that motherfucker. No. So the trial for the other 20 murder charges was basically dropped um, because they already gave him the max. Right. And so a lot of people have mixed feelings about this. I can see that. Yeah. You're like, those people that he killed still deserve that justice. justice. Yeah. Yeah. But you could argue it like, well, they still received it, but was it really for them? More of a closure mm -hmm. thing to be a part right. of a trial in a case and sentencing and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And not to mention like all the other women that he murdered that oh, there's no answer for. There's no DNA to definitively say if it was those women. Mm -hmm. um, I know the police have gone to like their families and say, can you provide DNA for us to compare X, Y, right. and Z and see if it matches? Some people have, some families haven't. Um, they say because they live far away or whatever the case may be. But there are still a lot of women's remains that have not been identified. And he admitted, sure. though, to 49 kills. He admitted it uh, to, to the undercover. undercover cop. Yeah, but he he won't admit it like in court was it is that like, like a that. recorded thing or no yeah it was recorded Ooh, there's, have you heard there's it? a uh yeah there's a video online of it oh my gosh yeah definitely um I, I i don't know if i'm jumping ahead here but i'm dying to know what happened with that skull that was washed up in the beginning you talked about just taken into evidence and and was the guy know. who found it was he he had no link to willie picton no no it was just yeah, he wasn't like in on it or anything. That, but that skull below was probably from Willie's farm. Oh, for sure, because it was cut the same way that the other skulls were yeah. cut that were located. That was really chilling when you told me that the other skulls they found in the slaughterhouse were cut vertically, just like the first right. one. Yeah, you know, I didn't know where it was going. I assumed it wasn't going somewhere pretty, but I mean, <laughs> you think? <laughs> so, Damn. um, just kind of a an, an extra little bit here. Um, very recently, September fourteenth, twenty twenty. 
the uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police decided to put in like this. I guess they have to put in some sort of like application to get permission to destroy evidence after a case has been closed. And so they applied to destroy about 200 pieces of evidence that they had collected from the farm. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I believe that they have a total of like, they have about between 120 to 100 and, no, I'm sorry, 120 to about 200,000 pieces of evidence. Wow. Because they're all these teeny tiny little fucking fragments. So they're trying to probably just like, (laughs) yeah, we've had these get rid of some of it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to destroy 200 pieces of it. And a thousand or 200. I'm sorry, 200. Thank you. 200 Uh pieces. So Willie decides to oppose it. And so, as they're like having this now, like in twenty now in twenty twenty, what a freak! Oh, he's such an asshole. And so he wrote this letter uh, addressing the court. And during like during the court proceedings, he I guess they had him on Skype or whatever. And the judges, you know, judge heard the the police side of it, and then Willie jumps in. And he says that, oh, you know, I, I, I'm really against you guys destroying this because I wasn't informed that you were going to destroy this evidence until last minute. What so, does he care? I, does, right. It's, so it's like, not I, his. My lawyer misled me and my lawyer misled the court. And they're like, it's like fuck you, dude. Yeah, you took go people's fuck lives. Yourself. You're mad that someone's destroying the people you killed, the evidence. And- Here's the best part, right, is what he said. He said that it's it's so important that you guys don't destroy any evidence and it's important for the victims families you oh know my not for God. me but these poor victims families they really need to know the truth of what happened oh like like as if he's like right like he's innocent and then right. he's like yeah you guys need this evidence so you can finally uh catch the real person oh who is he did still it. denying that he oh did yeah it? uh-huh he said we need to prosecute people the the real people responsible for these quote unwarranted crimes against humanity so the sex worker that got away that he attacked what yeah which one she, oh yeah wendy yeah, that wasn't uh-huh. did she ever like was she ever like a witness in to trial oh, and sure, like yeah. yeah that's him that's like, the motherfucker crazy if he thinks it wasn't i'm sure she was yeah yeah i mean if she was part of the book and stuff she's come forward so this and- is another exit real quick that he he wrote in the letter addressing the court he said this quote so please Let's keep an open mind and a level head to all of these court proceedings. Because in all fairness, it's to find the truth and protect the innocent. Oh my, so total sociopath, (sighs) lunatic. God, he makes me sick. Fucking Willie Picton. Seriously, that's so scary. I don't know how I've never heard about this. Like, this right? is you know what? Horrific story um, I've ever heard. Horror, Since horror. we launched the Buried Sisters on our Instagram, I, it was like I had put out there if anyone had any cases yeah, like any they want us for... to cover or research, whatever. Yeah. And Willie Picton was a pretty big one. Um, and also getting a lot of uh, larger cases like the Night Stalker and, you know, um, Lisa Lamb with Cecil Hotel and all that. But then... Willie Picton wasn't one I really heard about. So it was really, I have a few more that we need to go through, but it was really interesting that this seems to be something bigger on people's radar than, and it sounds like what, while it's not totally recent, there are still recent, I was of last like year, September 2020 developments, right? And I can't believe he's still denying it. Yeah. But. Thank you. Our, our loyal grave diggers for yeah. listening. <laughs> and if you made it this far, then then yeah, for the craziness. <laughs> <laughs> of us and uh, now Willie Picton. Well, uh, on that note, let's uh, just say um, don't forget, folks, to stay paranoid or be buried. Once again, thanks for listening, Grave Diggers. Don't forget to rate and review The Buried Sisters on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to follow us at facebook.com backslash The Buried Sisters and on Instagram at The Buried Sisters. Dig you later. Thank you.